guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled He was wearing headphones. Sir, he has autism. Last night, Oscar and I were talking about the incident I had with a Karen at the local store last year and how his former co-worker, Leela, saved me before the situation got worse. He had his own story to share and has granted me permission to post it here. Cast Oscar Manager Joseph Helpful guest stocking shelves Penny Joseph's mom George Jerkass customer Back before he joined the company we both now work for, Oscar was doing his rounds around the department store he worked at, talking to customers and employees, and making sure everything was running smoothly. It was a slower than usual Monday, so Oscar was able to enjoy his stroll. He came upon a teenaged guest reorganizing the stuffed animals and making everything look neat, under the supervision of his mom. Oscar noticed the guest was wearing noise-canceling headphones. Oscar, thank you so much for making everything look neat, you've got an eye for detail. Penny. A bit embarrassed, he likes to organize and clean up as it helps calm him when he gets overstimulated. I can get him to stop if it's being a problem. Oscar, nodding, my son does the same thing, and as long as it helps him, then you're more than welcome to. To Joseph, you're doing a great job. He left. Oscar decided to get some paperwork done when they heard a loud clattering and a cry. Oscar ran back to see this huge man who looked like he had eaten one Thanksgiving dinner too many and his button-up shirt was about ready to bust open standing over Joseph. Joseph had his hands over his ears, now sans headphones, and looking like a proverbial deer in the headlights. The guest was pointing at him. George, now that you aren't listening to your music, are you going to help me? Penny walked up to him. Penny, sir, my son is not an employee and has autism. George looks at Penny with narrowed eyes. Don't lie. He was wearing headphones. Realizing the situation needed to be de-escalated, Oscar walked up, customer service smile on his face, although he was seething inside. Oscar. May I help you, sir? George. Notices Oscar. Thank God you're here. You really need to tell your employees here, points at Joseph and Penny, to not wear headphones on the job and to stop covering for each other. I can't believe that you hire. Insert seven-letter insult that begins with an R, ends with an S, and is considered the best way to get your ass kicked at least six ways to Sunday in all 50 states. Now the important thing to know about Oscar is this. While he's a kind man who will give you the last dollar in his pocket if you needed it, he really doesn't take kindly to someone being treated badly, especially if it's a person with disabilities as his younger son has autism. Oscar looks the customer down with a dad glare, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to watch your language and your actions. I can verify that these are a pair of guests and that he was rearranging the shelves because he wanted to. And even if they did work here, that doesn't give you the right to harass them. Just then, a security guard walked over, apparently attracted by the commotion. George went from tomato red to bedsheet white. Oscar turned back to Penny. Oscar, if you want to press charges, we can help you with that. Penny, crying at this point. No, I think it'd be best if we just left. Oscar, okay, if you think that is best. George, now realizing that this would be the best time to left, walked away. Oscar picked up the headphones and returned it to Joseph. Penny hugged Joseph. Penny, thank you, sir. Oscar, you're welcome. I apologize that you had to endure that. Is there anything I can do to make the situation better? Penny, no, but we greatly appreciate it. Oscar, I'll let the staff know to watch out for that man, and if there's any problems, don't hesitate to contact us. George never stepped into the store again. From then on, Joseph and Penny would come into the department store to say hello and organize the shelves every Monday, with Oscar occasionally bringing out some extra toys for Joseph to put away if he wanted. The next story is titled Got Free Drinks Despite Idiot. After work, walk to the bar to meet some friends for drinks. Bladder is a walnut, so back and forth to washroom regularly, past a party of four at a table. On the return of the first toilet run, I hear something like, come hear you from some woman who looks like she just tipped her head in a bucket of makeup. Lack of manners do not dignify a response, ignore it and rock on. Second go to washroom, didn't get it all out. This idiot grabs my arm, squeezes her nails in, pulling me in close 
and says four of the same while tapping the glass with her other hand's nails. Idioti elegant I think she was imagining herself, in reality just really damn aggressive and nasty. I don't work here lady, she lets go, and I walk away. It's known in the bar any waiter can serve any table. They won't come to you, just get any of their attentions, like she would have done to get the drinks, she is because I doubt they would have waited that long without a drink. But she seems determined now, it's gotta be me. Third go to the toilet, it's worse than usual. Catch a death glare and on my way back kicks her bag under my feet to trip me up. Sort of succeeds and snarls, I better not have broken anything. And where are her drinks she asks? Fair game now, back in a moment, they'll be on the house. Back to my table I go. Out of line of sight with her now thanks to a wall. In my safe space away from crazy with booze. Perfect. Place is dead quiet, hear a commotion a few minutes later kicking up. Tune my ear in, none other than her, ah. She is arguing with the manager and some waiter about not being served, and wants waiter to bring her free drinks like promised or they leave. He is soft tone speaker so can't make out what he says, only her loud obnoxious self. A storm is a brewing. I lie in wait, or not. Can't hold pee any longer. Take a different route, go pee. Walk back out of washroom and she notices me, drink in her hand like she wanted to crush it to death, like she was just awarded a trophy that required a death grip. A mission in her eyes while looking like some sort of fugly meerkat. She was on the lookout for me. Decide duck it, walk back past stable at speed like I'm rushing to explain myself, but just speed by with a great big stupid vacant smile, girl trolling. Explosion, she throws a large ice jug from the table, at my back shrieking in some trashy Amazonian travel display. Hits me, no injury, but startle and fall. Manager comes a rushing, sweat pumping out of her at this point, makeup contours blending together. 190 slash 140 BP type stuff. Screaming like a loon, she will get what she wants. Manager assesses situation and some older woman states, something like she just threw the jug at him, no reason, and demanded her buy her free drink. Close enough, and even makes her see more loony tunes. Manager tells her she is barred out or police will be called. Making threats now her boyfriends, yes with an S, will be down to sort this out. Manager asks her to confirm she is making a physical threat. Grinding her teeth, she stomps out, irreparably tearing ankle tissue, with her heels going off balance with her alpha walk, obviously struggling, probably considering an A and E trip afterwards. Manager apologizes, I say it's cool, not his fault, handled it well, she was just crazy, etc, etc. Can I get you and your friends around? It's on the house. Ah, I for that moment in those first few sips, swear I could actually taste justice. It had earthy tones, with a hint of citrus, with a faint odor of courtroom and elderflower. The next story is titled Neighbor Extends Driveway Onto Our Property. Admits fault and does nothing. Note, in the province of Ontario, the only legal and recognized land surveyor is an Ontario land surveyor, Alls. Your brother-in-law who knows how to work a transit just isn't qualified. I moved from the Toronto area back up north in 2007. In 2008, we bought a home on a four-acre forested lot from the original owner. Through conversations with the original owner, I remembered him muttering something about how the neighbor to the north had their driveway awful close to the property line. I thought no more about it until later that fall. Our neighbor's house was built slab on grade and the builder must have messed up or not properly installed any drainage for the gravel pad. Every time it rained, they had water into their ground floor, an inconvenience to say the least. But not my problem. That is, until the neighbor rented an excavator and had a deep ditch dug all along our side of his driveway, dumping all of rocks and spoil from the excavation onto our property. We also lost a number of trees, this all mature black maple sugar bush trees. I was getting concerned. We had problems with a jerk neighbor in Toronto and ended up having to get a survey and put up a fence. I wasn't going to lose any sleep worrying about it this time, call for a surveyor and get this over with. It turns out the OLS firm I called were the ones who surveyed the development when it was built 10 years earlier. They had no trouble mapping out how and where the neighbor's driveway for over 100 feet now arced up to 12 feet onto our property. Never mind the rocks and dirt in the bush beyond that. I sent a registered letter with a copy of the survey and a polite letter to our neighbor. With registered you have to sign to pick it up. They received it, but did not respond. I waited a month and then sent another registered letter. That one wasn't picked up and was returned to me. Yeah, that should work. If I don't receive the letter everything will just go away. 
In way of explanation, the neighbor was a successful local businessman, and in smaller communities, some of them tend to think that they're a bit special and can make their own rules. I learned from the jerk neighbor in Toronto that there's not much point trying to discuss things personally. We have a system, let's use it. The next letter that's sent to them is from our real estate law firm. They know the right language to use and how to get someone's attention. Surprise, that one not only gets picked up but we receive a letter from their lawyer. They freely admit that they're at fault and will make everything right. Except they don't. They don't do anything for the next three years. Absolutely nothing. I starting receiving expert advice from some of my friends. Op, you should fix it at your own cost and then sue them for that amount. Oh, uh, well, what if they claim they could have fixed it a lot cheaper? Or I did a bunch of things that weren't needed. Op, uh, you should charge them for all the trees they cut down and make them replace them. Yeah, but we do live in the forest and trees aren't really hard to find. In fact, we cut down trees that get too big too close to the house. It's not like we're in the big city. I decide to do nothing. After the angst and sleepless nights with the jerks in Toronto, I decide to just wait it out. After all, they've admitted fault through their lawyer. It's not like they can wiggle out of that one or change their minds. I learned that the neighbor's wife hates living in the forest and would much rather have a schmancy house in town. And with the water problem that has never been resolved, it just isn't as much fun as they had thought it would be. Four years later, what I was waiting for, a realtor's for sale sign in front of their house. I stop and take a picture of the sign so that I have the phone number of the listing agent. I call them as soon as I get to work. Hi, this is OP. I see you're listing a property at XXX. You may not be aware of this, but your client is trespassing on my property. Of course, the neighbor can't pretend this isn't true, and now we have to clean up the mess to our satisfaction before the property can be sold. Oh my! The five-yard dump trucks ran for close to three weeks. They hauled load after load after load of topsoil. It had to be dumped, spread out, and compacted. The gravel driveway had to be dug up and pulled back to the property line, and all that filled in as well. At the end it was all seated with the understanding that it will eventually go back to being forest. SJK, is it okay now? Not quite yet, it looks like there is still a lot of work to do. All the weeping tile, rocks and piles of dirt were removed as well. Not a job easily done and very time consuming. Don't get mad. Wait, then get even. The next story is titled the owner of my work pulled the I don't work here lady on a customer. So I used to work at a bar. The owner was an ass but he great to work for. He was a super alcoholic and a great tipper. He had been permanently banned from every other bar in town, which was why he bought the bar. He had a policy that if he was drinking he wasn't the owner, so if he got out of hand, we could throw him out but not 86 or call the cops on him. Now, I also would like to add that all he did was sign the checks. He had nothing to do otherwise with the day-to-day -day of the bar other than drinking. One morning I was opening the bar and typically the doors are unlocked an hour before we opened, so regulars could come in and drink. They knew the bartender would be cleaning and stocking the bar and would just deal with small wait times to get a drink or refill. The owner came in and didn't want to wait for me to come out of the back, so he went behind the bar and made himself a drink. He then went and sat at the bar put money on a rubber mat. When I came out of the back with a few cases of beer, I hear a woman going off on someone who I found out was the guy who signs my checks. She was going off about how horrible he was for drinking on the job and refusing to make her a drink. He simply told her he didn't work there and went back to his drink. When she saw me she immediately started complaining about him saying she wanted to speak to the owner or manager. Since I was the only one there I told her she'd have to deal with me. She went on her tirade about him needing to be fired and then demanded a free drink for his rudeness and unwillingness to help her. I told her that wasn't going to happen as he didn't work there. Then she decided to take it up a notch and said she knew the owner. Cute typical Lil Bolt be fired rant and the owner is shaking his head laughing which made her madder. I called her bluff and told her to either shut up and order a drink or leave because I have things to do. She got huffy and then demanded a tab, trying to hand me a credit card. I informed her we were cash only but she was welcome to go pull money out of the ATM near the bathroom. That didn't make her happy so she decided to stomp out of the bar saying she'd take her business elsewhere. The owner then asked for my keys and promptly locked the door behind her. As soon as he did that he came back and said I've never met that woman so you're definitely not fired. We had a good laugh. She did come back about 20 minutes later because there was another bar open and got super pissed when my boss waved and went back to his drink. She banged on the door for about 5 minutes. 
He then made me a sign to put up on the glass door with the bar hours, and she got in her car and sped off. I luckily never saw her again. The next story is titled Just Run Across the Store and Tell Them to Answer the Phone. I used to work the customer service desk at a large grocery chain in Pennsylvania. By far, the most common call we got was people asking for the pharmacy. For us, and for a lot of large chain stores, the pharmacy is its own separate entity in all respects except for sharing the building. Think of it like two different stores at a shopping mall. They had a different name, different staff, different logo, different everything. For us, we weren't even on the same phone system for privacy reasons, so when people would ask to speak to the pharmacy, the only thing we could do was give them the information to connect to the pharmacy directly. We'd often get people who call and begin spilling their medical history before you could stop them. But this was one of my most memorable calls. Based on the voice, this was an adult in their 30s or 40s. Me, thanks for calling large grocery store. My name is Chris, how can I help you? Lady, hi, can you connect me with the pharmacy? Me, I'm unable to transfer you, but I can give you the pharmacy's direct number to call. Lady, no, I just want you to transfer me. Me, I understand the pharmacy is a separate store and on a different phone line, so my phone here isn't able to transfer you. But I can give you their phone number to call them directly. Lady, so why you won't transfer my call? Me, I'm sorry, it's a bit of a pain, I know. I wish I could, the phone just can't do it because they have their own system so that patients don't accidentally leave voicemails with sensitive medical information on the grocery store's phone. But I have their number ready for you to connect with them directly. Lady, ugh, fine. Give her phone number, about 30 seconds goes by, my phone rings again. Me, thanks for calling large grocery store. My name is Chris, how can I help you? Lady, hello, I just spoke to you about calling the pharmacy. I called and they didn't answer. I can't see the pharmacy from my station, but on Saturday mornings they were always busy. And given the length of time between calls, she couldn't have called more than once. Me, I'm sorry about that ma'am. It's very possible that they're busy. But I'm sure if you call back in a few minutes or leave a… Lady, I don't want to leave a message. I want to talk to someone now. Can't you call over and ask them to answer the phone? Me, I want to help, but I can't really force them to answer the lady. I'm going to hang up and call them. You go over there and tell them to answer the damn phone while I'm calling. Me, ma'am, I'm afraid that I can't do that. Like I said if you call and leave a mess. Lady, why won't you help me? Go over and tell them to answer the phone. Do you even understand what I'm asking you to do? Me, ma'am, I understand what you're asking me to do and I'm afraid I can't do that. But I can. Lady, I want to speak to your manager. Me, I'm happy to connect you with the pharmacy manager. But I can't transfer you, you have to call them directly. The next story is titled I was doing my makeup and almost got fired from a job I don't even work at. Thanks Karen. I got a call from an absolute Karen today. She called my number thinking it was the Windermere Hotel in Arizona, I think. Anyway she called I answered and she was like hi, my reservation got cancelled I want to speak to your manager. I booked this room over a month ago and you guys were expecting me and some of my girlfriends. How could you do this to me? She was low-key raising her voice and I was like I'm sorry ma'am, but I don't work at a hotel. You have the wrong number she responded with well how come I called this number a month ago and it was the hotel. How do you have their number then? And I explained to her that this was never their number. It's just a simple misunderstanding and a typo on her end. So she stared raising her voice at me and went how could I have dialed the wrong goddamn number? Why are you keeping me from your manager? And I was like listen, my number has a similar number, but you typed it in wrong. If you would kindly get your head out of your entitled, privileged ass, then maybe you'd be able to see how to type the right ducking number in. She got pissed and hung up I was dead. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.